Welcome everyone to Season 5 of my Manchester United series here on Football Manager 2017. Hasn't the time gone quick? Well, last season, as you know, we won the Premier League, we won the Champions League, and we also won the EFL Cup. And there is still plenty more to do, plenty more to accomplish with Manchester United. You can see that this season we're going to be taking on the likes of Leeds United. Can't wait for that. Both home and away, they uh, they did get promoted from the championship last season, so they're in the Premier League this year. It must be like the first time in so many years. It's been quite some time now since they were back in the uh, the Premier League. Huddersfield are also up, so are Derby County. So it, it should be a good season. Hopefully we can retain our title. And what's going to be even more difficult is trying to retain our Champions League title. Can we do a PSG? Can we do it for a second time this season? We'll see. Plus, we've got the UEFA Super Cup against Tottenham coming up very soon. But first, let me take you guys through my transfer business of the summer. It's big. Looking at the outgoings then for Manchester United, it's a long list. Out first was Indy Boonen. He's joined West Ham United for 5.5 million. That deal could eventually rise to 8.25 million. There's been quite a few players leaving on a free as well, including Matthew Willock, Mikela, Thomas Sang, Harry Spratt, George Tanner, Foschek, Dimitri Mitchell, Bowie and Erkelani. Now, onto the big outgoings. Up first was Mats Hummels. He has left Manchester United, didn't have the best of seasons last year. He was out for the majority of the season. He's now match fit, but he has rejoined Bayern Munich. He signed from, uh, from Bayern Munich. We've made a huge loss on this deal, to be honest. We signed him for 55 million. Had a brilliant first season at United, but as you can see, he only made 13 appearances last season. And uh, yeah. He's joined, uh, he's rejoined Bayern Munich, I should say, for 12.75 mil. Carrying on our summer clear out, Fabinho was up next to leave United. He's now joined Spanish giants Real Madrid for a fee of 29 million. Again, we've kind of made a bit of a loss on this deal, but his first season at United, it went okay, but he was a complainer. He wanted first team football all the time and he just wasn't getting it, so he was quite happy to go and join Real Madrid. About three quarters of the way through last season, I was pretty certain I was going to get rid of Mkhitaryan. And then when the summer rolled around, I was very hesitant towards letting it happen. So he's gone on loan to Monaco. He's still part of Manchester United. I mean, those first three seasons at United, he was brilliant. But last season, just looking at those numbers, you can start to see the decline. So I think it was probably the right time to loan him out to, to Monaco. We'll see what he can do this season. And if he's, uh, if he's improved, then maybe we'll, uh, we'll bring him back. And finally, it is with great regret that I have to announce that Anthony Martial has left Manchester United. I really, really didn't want this to happen. Honestly, I didn't want to let him go. But Martial was... He was determined to leave United for PSG. Even though we won the Champions League last season, even though we put that medal around his neck, he still wanted to leave for PSG. So it, oh, it just pains me to see this. It really does. I mean, yes, we got a lot of money from this deal. 117 million he cost PSG. They finally got their man after season after season of watching him from the stands. They've got him. He is in the PSG shirt, but look at those numbers. He was superb for United. He is a huge loss. As Manchester United, though, we have to keep moving on. Our first signing of the summer was Eric Dyer from Spurs. At the age of 26, I thought, you know, he's um, kind of the perfect player to just bring in. I mean, he's been linked with United in real life. Whether that will go ahead or not, I don't know, but I think he'll be decent. Up next was a signing for the future, Dejan Jovalich. I think that's how you pronounce his name. At the age of 21, he is a centre forwards, valued at 600,000 a week. I've signed him and sent him straight out on loan. He has brilliant potential. I believe he's uh, a wonder kid as well on Football Manager 2017 this year. So we'll see uh, see what he can produce at his new club in FK Rad over in Serbia. So he hasn't really left the country. He's just come over to England, put pen to paper and gone back as he is on loan. I mean, he's made three appearances already, he's scored one goal. So looking pretty promising so far. Our third and probably final signing of the summer it's a big one. It's Aiden Hazard from Chelsea. I had to bring in someone to replace Anthony Martial after 
I mean, he's left a huge hole in this team, Martial, after leaving for PSG. I had to find a world-class winger. I mean, I did at first think maybe Angel Gomez can step up, maybe Marcus Rashford, but what if Rashford gets injured? What if Angel Gomez doesn't turn out to be as, as good as I hope? We need someone that's proven in the Premier League. We need someone that's world-class. And I think Aiden Hazard can fill that. We've signed him from Chelsea for £90 million. I mean, you look at the last couple of seasons. He's been superb. Now, before I did sign Hazard, I was looking at two other players, two other wingers, such as Cristiano Ronaldo. I looked at maybe bringing him home. But that deal didn't get done, obviously. And then I looked at Gareth Bale. Now, this deal was almost across the line. He was happy to join United. But for some odd reason, he signed a new contract. So there we have it. That is my transfer business of the uh, of the summer. We've sold a total of 165 million. Biggest deal there, Anthony Martial to Paris Saint-Germain. And I've only signed three players for a total of 132 million. I think it's good business. I'm still kind of open to bringing in maybe one more player. I've still got a budget of 128 million. So much money at the moment. But yeah, I'm very content with the team that I've got now at my uh, disposal. So this fifth season does bring in uh, a fresh, kind of a fresh start, a kind of a new era. I've had the clear out in the summer, which I said I was going to do in uh, the last episode. I'm also going to be going forwards with this new formation, this 4-3-2-1. I've also downloaded some new uh, face packs as well. So Angel Gomez has a has a face now, giving the, uh, the game like a, a new lick of paint, if you will, freshening things up, you know. I mean, we're in the fifth season with the United, so it has to be done. But yeah, I mean, with the team that I've got now, I mean, Marcus Rashford is back from injury. I can't wait to get him back in the team. He missed the majority of last season, which was such a, a shame. But I'm hoping he can kick on now. He's still at a really decent age at 22. Still got Kylian Mbappe. I did think about maybe selling him in the summer, but I've decided to keep hold of him. We've still got Andrew Ferguson. Can't wait to go forwards. I mean, just looking at this team, it has so much potential to go on and retain the Premier League trophy. And, and also uh, do the business in the Champions League. Robert Lewandowski, can he kick on, pick up where he left off from last season? How many goals did he score now? It was way over 40, wasn't it? And I've been playing Lindelof at centre-back as well, seeing how well he can uh, work alongside the likes of Eric Bay. He's done really well. Been really impressed with him there. So... Our first pre-season game, we lost 2-1, but we got back on track with a 3-1 win against Angers. Andrea Bellotti with two goals, Ander Herrera with a goal just before half-time. Then we beat Dynamo Dresden 5-0. Angel Gomez got a goal in that game. Andrea Bellotti with another two goals. Pogba also got on the score sheet. Up next, we were playing against Frankfurt. We beat them 3-0. Angel Gomez with two goals. It's almost as if he's ready to to step into that first team spot on the left hand side then we beat Hamburg 4-0 Lewandowski with a goal Mata with two and Matt on a Sunday I was very impressed with his performance and to cap it off with the goal just perfect I will just quickly show you guys his goal actually it was, uh, it was quite something so you can see the ball comes out to Ola Sunday who's hovering around outside the box he hits it did take a deflection, I know, but with such force, it found its way into the back of the net. I mean, Kraft, their goalkeeper, was just rooted to the spot. So, a good 4-0 win there. We went on to play Bayern Munich, which rounded off our German tour. And we did, unfortunately, lose that 1-0. And then we were back in England to play at Wembley in the Community Shield. We beat West Brom 2-0 uh, with goals from Robert Lewandowski and Paul Pogba. Up next then, we've got the UEFA Super Cup against Tottenham, who won the Europa League last season. They will be without Harry Kane, who's got back straight. He was another player that I looked at signing in the summer, but for some reason, well, it, it's David Levy, it's Tottenham. They don't want to let go of their, uh, well, their best player, I would say. And after I signed Eric Dyer from them, I kind of lost interest in, in Harry Kane. I didn't want to sign two players from Spurs. David De Gea is away on international duty for the Spanish under-23s. I don't understand this. I mean, he's at the age of 29. He's Spain's number one goalkeeper. Why is he in the under-23s? I mean, we're not going to have De Gea in goal now for the first, what is it, three games of the new season? He's going to miss the opening day against Newcastle. Then he's going to miss the big one against Liverpool and Tottenham again. He's certainly going to miss the UEFA Super Cup final against Spurs, but... To be without our number one goalkeeper for those first three games, 
yeah, we might struggle in that area, but you can see it's quite a tough start to the to the new season for the uh, the Premier League champions. I mean, we finished the season. Look at those last three fixtures: Leeds, Derby, and Chelsea. So there we have it. That is the start of season five. Join me for the next episode when we'll be playing Tottenham in the UEFA Super Cup final. Don't miss it. Can we pick up another piece of silverware? Thanks for watching, guys.